think this is probably the chance he's going to go all the way. But that was winners. Uh, we're now going to be taking a step into our losers bracket where we're definitely in elimination territory. And I believe our first match should be Galileo versus Xerox. Now, this is going to be, as we mentioned, the lone European defender in this bracket. Uh, Xerox originating from Germany, uh, just fresh off a Dragon Ball Fighters win at Viennality, which was a few weeks ago uh, in Austria. And he was able to defeat the likes of Fox Grandpa, he was able to defeat White Black, you know, Athey was in that bracket as well, Rizza was in that bracket. Uh, there were some really prominent European heads, and he was able to basically place top in that tournament undefeated. He just collected heads left, right, and center. He's looking really good in this tournament, but definitely there's no doubt that this is the hardest Dragon Ball tournament of his life. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there really is any two ways about that. You, know, you, just, you look at the caliber of competition here, like as amazing as it was to see, you know, a lot of the, the UK and European players face off against you know, these top level international players. Um, ultimately, you know, a, a lot of them did fall you know, in, in the kind of top 32 territory. You know, a lot of them made it out of pools, but would end up losing out top 32, top 16, you know, some of them ninth. So there was close, but it really is Xerox that is that, that top European contender right now. And um, he is in the loser's side, so obviously you know, he, he was sent to, to losers by Sonic Fox yesterday, but uh, did well for himself to move through. You know, he was able to beat, uh, defeat the likes of Kindevu. He defeated Ixy in a nail biter of a series yesterday to get into top eight. But of course, going to be going up against Galileo, who had a really good uh, journey yesterday himself as well. Now, as we sit down, we have to wonder how far we reckon Zerok might get in this bracket. If he can have a really, really good start and defeat Galileo here, he will be facing. Uh, Dugura later on in this bracket, which will be a really killer match. I mean, I, I feel like Shark Tank is a, is a term that's used a lot to describe uh, losers of bracket, especially kind of in top eight territory, and I think that really is prominent here. How the winner of this match, your reward is to fight Dugura. Now, at this level of competition, your players, they're not going to shy away from that, though. They're going to see that and go, okay, cool, Dugura. I want that match. I want to be able to play it, especially Xerox. Xerox is a confident guy. You know, he is—he's uh, humble, but he is confident. He, he knows that he is—he stands a good chance. He wants to fight the best. He wants to improve as a player, and that's why we see him at so many events, right? We've seen him in the UK uh, yeah, about a couple of months ago. We saw him in Vienna for the analogy. You said, you know, for yourself, he's, he's obviously from Germany, and here he is again in the UK. So he's not afraid to travel around the region just to be here and do well for himself. And he does have that team. I think um, it really was. The majority of his games played with that uh, Cell, Vegeta Blue, and Gotenks yesterday, but he didn't play it exclusively. He did uh, change it up when he when he fought against Ixy uh, for that 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 eighth place match into top eight yesterday. So the question is, what team is he going to bring to the table? He's known for that Vegeta Blue. Like that really is what makes him famous. And <laughs> Galileo just excited to be here. We can see a little bit of uh, charisma coming through. Uh, but I would hope to see Vegeta Blue uh, because I really think that's a character that. It almost kind of allows Xerox to really kind of stamp his own brand into that character because he has got so much tournament accolades with a character you don't really see every day. But of course, we see Cell, we see Gotenks. But has he gone for Bardock now? Is he not getting out any of the stops? We'll see. Well, it looks like that is going to be the choice. Yeah. Yeah, actually looks like that is going to be the choice from uh, from Xerox. So no Vegeta Blue, at least for now. But to be fair, you know, we have to remember, this is a Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour Saga event. You know, if you win this tournament, you get the two-star Dragon Ball, and you find your way into the finals. And this is loser's bracket. If you, know, if you lose here, that's it. It's over. If you're a European player, you want to be able to win one of those European Saga events, absolutely. So if you're not as confident in one of your teams as you are another, absolutely go with the one that makes you feel like you have the best chance. And for Xerox, it's going to be Cell, Bardock, and Gotenks against Galileo's Bardock, Goku Black, and Android 60. But for another time, it's going to be Cell first instead of Bardock first. And as time is progressing, we are starting to see Bardock used not exclusively as a point character because he has an amazing set of utility. He has a really, really good assist. And when you chuck any good assist on top of Cell, you know that you're going to be in for a bad time if you're on the receiving end. But that 16 allowing the pressure to come through and Galileo now laying the pressure on thick. <laughs> but no one's really yet to get a substantial hit. He's got some damage, but it is going to be Galileo coming off the assist, using both of them for this. So he's not going to have a lot of opportunity for Oki, but it is Bardock. He does a good job of that by himself. It looks like going to be all their patience and the immediate tag of Xerox getting in his own Bardock. We have that Bardock mirror match. I wonder how he's going to be able to defend one of the elements. Obviously, that Super Saiyan Spirit being invincible on startups. He does actually have that kind of reversal element. Getting opened up for another time, though. Zero now. Putting it on. He's got a decent amount of bar as well. Oh, I like to give the setup with the, uh, the Cell Assist. Galileo. We're actually seeing that a lot today, those, those, those quick tags. 
That's that Oki option, just to get off the ground. But did actually seem like quite a nice option, uh, kind of going for the uppercut combined with the cell assist. Kind of covers a lot of angles uh, with those hitboxes right there. No doubt we'll see that a little bit more. Ooh. Pressing buttons. And Xerox getting to be spin. wise to it. And the block tag. I like that though, because it really calls out Galileo, right? So Xerox is uh, going to be opting to go for that kind of thing. It's going to really keep him on his toes. You block a super dash, you've still got to be thinking about what comes next. Xerox managing to get on the hit, and already into the other corner as well. We're going in for that three bar, level three already. Xerox. Not messing around, he wants the Bardock knockdown. I don't think he's got any assists though, but we know that Bardock does a good job, especially off a level 3 by himself. Goes for the empty jump line with Galileo to wake up Sparky just to make sure he does not lose Goku Black. Getting caught, tagging him before the donut connects, but challenging the 16 as he comes in. And we now see a little bit more pressure. But that's the sparking gone now for Galileo. So that is that lifeline already spent. Oh, wow. I feel like that was almost reactionary, but still used at an incorrect time. I mean, I'm assuming the vanish there was probably used to keep them in the corner still. We did see that earlier on. Oh, and there's their patience, the guard cancel. Xerox is ready for it. That's going to be a full cell corner combo. Nice chunk of damage. Just some more for the wake up. Reflects from Galileo just to build the space. He's really disrespecting elements on Wake Up. You know, he's consistently going for things that aren't blocked. And I think that's actually really kind of putting the knowledge into Zerok's head where if you think I'm going to press buttons every single time and do anything but block, then it's going to really kind of force you to make some of those harder reads. What option are you going to pick? Well, we know that Galileo is definitely happy to do it, right? He's going to, you know, he'll do a couple of Wake Up reflects just to make sure that you can build that space. And then that will give him some more options. He's definitely the kind of player to really try and get in to that, that, that next level ahead. There's there combo. Go, Mayha, the hit confirm on the vanish. Oh, spending all of the meter. Not messing around zero. He has got such a substantial life lead as well. He could really keep this going. We have Bardock and Gotex behind the scenes. Ready to lay it on. And the cross up. Galileo just getting flustered right there. Point blank. Yeah, there was a slight shake of the head there from Galileo. I definitely don't think he was ready just for what side Zero was going to be on. But there's the Dragon Rush. It's Only enforcing, got one bar, but he's got the uh, assists at the very least. It's enforcing so much respect here too. Yeah, there's the sparking. It's gonna allow us to build some meter right here. Guard cancel to try and get out of dodge temporarily, but plenty more work left to go. He's got six bars, yes, but just look at the characters and look at the life he has to come back from. Backdash out of the plus frames. Cell does have a wonderful backdash. Okay, first get the bar to resist off the super dash for Galileo in the air, and there's the spin again. It confirms has the extra bar. That's actually probably gonna be the game and zero. Very stable game. Oh no! Just missed the end. Yeah, well, we couldn't finish it off. Didn't have the bar. No, you got close. Not quite but there enough, we go. But it won't matter. That there last one is super dash. Now, I think what we really just saw there was Xerox playing rock solid. Like, really, really rock solid. But there are a couple of, like, almost like somewhat scrambly situations where you didn't have a lot of time to figure out what was going on. Almost like small resets that may have been mistakes, may have been intentional. Either way, I think Galileo got overwhelmed multiple times and it just allowed him to just lose all the momentum. He had a pretty good start too, but Zero just snatched it away well, straight I, I, away. I feel like, especially in Dragon Ball Fighters, that's definitely a situation that you can find yourself in um, quite often at this level of play where you know, both players are so aware of their options. They, you know, they have the muscle memory down. But every now and then, you know, you're gonna, there's going to be something that you're not quite ready for. Be it, you know, a super dash here or a vanish you weren't quite expecting, or you, 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 you like you drop a combo at a point you very much normally do not drop it, and it kind of opens up those scrambles. And as a player, you have to be ready for those scrambles. Speaking of ready, uh, it's that Galileo. two H, get out of the air, mate. I mean, he is back having three characters in full health. Obviously, Zero spent a lot of that first game massively in the lead. Not to be said at the moment. Galileo now he gets taking the damage. Taking those minus frames. And now it's going to be his turn to play it on. <laughs> Take the plus frames again. Maybe actually, could have been expecting a backdash with that run in. The reflector is still going to seek to it. Okay, we catch him here again. Galileo, he's been picking some really good super dashes in this game. Well, this is a complete turnaround. Obviously, we saw before Zerg was able to kind of get the upper hand quite quickly, but no. Galileo, first one to get a level 3 here. That's going to be the knockdown he wants. He does have Goku Black Assist, which is going to be if he needs it, but no. Zero. Not afraid to spend that sparking, keep this character alive. I think it's not really a surprise. We saw Xerox bottom do so much work in that first game. Cannot afford to lose his character, and that's going to be a nice chance for some damage. I'm actually really surprised that he got hit by that overhead. You know, it, it almost seemed very much like Galileo was content to just sit there and block, knowing it was a level one sparking, so it's only going to be seven seconds. But then even before he could realize he had to sit there and block, he got opened up by one of the slower overheads in the game. Oh, and Xerox ready with a 2H again. And Galileo was likely to just try and get Bardock out as quickly as possible. And the tag came in. There's the reactionary 2H into a level 3 setup again. This is that Bardock classic. Wake up, reflecting at Galileo. He really is opting to go for that a lot. 
It is going to force uh, pretty much Zero to stop in his tracks when he tries to lay the pressure on. If he tries to go for Oki, if he knows you're going to reflect every time, it's going to make you not. And I love the catch on the light. No spin for you. Oh, there's going to be some more damage coming through from Zero. Go Tanks. You know, when Go Tanks has a C himself, it be quite a pain in the neck. I don't keep her going. But a tag again, Galileo. I love that. When Galileo is back to the wall, he does so many just raw tags. Just to try and get the characters out. Do you like me? To be honest, like Zero is he's dealing with tags a lot, kind of mid screen <laughs> or just did outside the exact the same corner. thing back, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it really is those kind of like point blank corner tags that Zero is consistently not really being as ready for. Oh wow, we're wasting no time. We must get rid of Goku Black. Get rid of the beam assist. Oh, it gets opened up, but no, the Dragon Rush. Dragon Rush is on hit are such a good strategy sometimes because when you get hit, you almost like reel back in your chair. Sometimes it's almost a, oh wow, I got hit, and then you're ready for the combo. If you're ready for the combo. You're not ready to tech. One of the lowest chances, I think, of you actually getting that tech is if you have been hit first. Oh, oh wow. And then just a raw Super Dash. Xerox making that big read on Galileo, but he did the rocket punch. And that is what Xerox was looking for. It's exactly what he got. Into a full cell corner combo. How much fast spend? He's going to spend the level three. This is a good chance for Xerox if he can keep this going and take away this Android 16. Galileo, he has used his sparking already. No meter, but two assists. Oh. And the instant overhead, these big hitboxes. 16, one of the taller characters in the game. A lot of those instant overhead situations will work against him. Didn't kill just yet. Galileo getting caught by the lights again. This should be a dead character. And 16 is going to be that final lifeline. Unideal situation to be in for Galileo. He doesn't have sparking. He has very low health and some blue life disappearing too. He's got plenty of meter, but I mean, this is going to be tough. Solo 16 is not what it used to be. Still a very scary character, but not quite in the same fashion. Definitely without that knockdown. You know, the second we lost that hard knockdown on the regular command grab, I think it definitely kind of hindered the solo capabilities of 16. But there's a confirm. All right. It's the first little victory of many if he has a chance to take this game. But it's a good start. Reset. Oh, there's the quick reset. The variety players do that a lot. They'll tend to deliberately end combos at points that you don't normally end them, just so the, you know, your opponent is less ready for the reset. The Galileo backdashes at a bad time, and that actually might be enough by itself. Yep, that's going to be it. Oh, and it will tag the end, and Xerox nodding to himself. He's going to be happy with that one. Galileo, unfortunately, going to be eliminated here in top eight. But of course, huge congratulations for getting this far, but Xerox is going to be moving forward to face off against Dogura, and that is going to be a match we want to see. That's going to be really, I think, a match that puts Xerox to the test, the ultimate test. You know, we know that Xerox is a fantastic European player. He's got this far in the top eight. He's advancing in the top eight, but now he has to take out one of the absolute best of the best. But this is a saga event. This is where those matches happen. And it's where they count. You know, that that's that's really is the kicker here. You know, there are only so many saga events, of course. I believe there are seven